starting to get hot and humid here in Arkansas. Here in my high tunnel, I've got shade cloth over it now. But this, right in this area, is where I grew all my greens and my lettuces last winter. And uh, we ate out of this garden all winter long. But as the heat started coming on here last week, my kale and my spinach and everything just started bolting. And that's what it'll do when, when it starts really getting hot. So it was time for me to pull up my kale and my spinach. Um, we ate most of the lettuce before it got too bitter because of the heat. And uh, so now it's time, since I pulled all that up, it's going to be time for me to go ahead and plant some warmer uh, crop plants right here in this area where the kale was. Um, so we took the kale and now we're going to strip the leaves and we're going to can it for the winter. That way I've got grains, healthy kale uh, that will be on my pantry shelf. Now I know a lot of people will say, well Lori, when you pressure can anything, doesn't it just zap all the good nutrients out of it? And we've talked about this before, and yes, it does take some of it out, but it'll still keep a lot of it. And when you're a homesteader, that's what you do, is you uh, you prepare your pantry for the winter time. So that's what it will be doing. So I can tell you that all these greens that we grew all winter long fed us, fed us all winter. So whether if you have a high tunnel or not, whether if you just have a, a little container, you can do this in the winter time. I started my seeds in the fall. They come up fast. They done because of cooler weather. My greens and my lettuces just thrived, and uh, they were so good all winter long. I never went to the store and bought any kind of greens or any kind of lettuce all winter. I haven't up to this point right now because like I said the lettuce is done because of the hot weather so um, but I am working on that I want to start doing some hydroponic stuff in the house so I'm working on that but we also have some good farmers markets too where I can get my lettuce but everything else will be grown right here on the homestead but you can build you a cold frame out of old wood and an old window you can have greens and you can have lettuces in the winter time. You can have them kind of vegetables. It, it won't take much to do it. You don't have to spend five, eight, ten thousand dollars on a high tunnel to have this stuff. Um, it's just not feasible for most people and most homesteaders, but it can be done. So as winter comes back, which is going to be a while, we'll get back into that one. But I just wanted to explain to y'all why I had to take up all my greens. It's just that time of year and uh, I wanted to get them canned up and preserve what I have rest of, uh, of last winter's greens. So let's get started and let's get all that kale canned up. After stripping all the leaves off the kale stems we took and of course we had them in a big tub and we washed the kale um, probably six times, six to seven times that we washed and rinsed and washed and rinsed because there's so much dust and dirt on your leaves. In our greens, and what we're going to do is we'll just take our greens, we'll put them in the uh, the simmering water, hot water here on the stove, and uh, we're going to let them blanch for about three seconds. Then I'm going to pull it out, put them in here, and from here I'm going to the sink and I'll put them in some cold water to stop the cooking. And uh, that's the next step before we put them in the jars. Now they say that it takes about 28 pounds of greens to make uh, seven quarts. Because we know that once you, once these wilt down, I mean once they cook, if they just really wilt down to, you know, even half and I think 18 pounds 
of grains will make nine pints. I'm not sure how many pounds I've got here. All I know is I went to the garden and picked the rest of the kale and, the, and a lot of the chard and I've got a, my wash pan full and uh, I do have a, a scale to weigh it with but I just didn't worry with it because whatever it makes, it makes and it'll be in the pantry. So uh, let's get started with wilting our, our blanching our, our greens. I got my jars over here in hot water and I've got my sink full of cold water to stop the, the, uh, the cooking. Uh, I'm just going to put so a good two big handfuls is about what I'm going to put in here to after they get done blanching. So I'm just going to kind of stir it around for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to bring them out. Canning greens is not hard. There's just several uh, different stages you have to go through to get it to your uh, to your canning process. You have to clean your greens really, really well, especially after a good rain or storm, because a lot of that dirt and mud jumps up on your leaves. And you got little bugs and, and dust and stuff on your grains. And I washed and rinsed these, I don't know, five or six times till, I, till the water looked good and clean and I just felt comfortable with it. Okay, I'm going to take this over to my cold water. I'm just wanting to show y'all the process. So I'm going to bring y'all over here. See if I can get y'all set up where you can see. And I've got a freezer pack, a chill. I've got one of these in my water to keep it cold. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just submerge them in the cold water to get them to quit cooking. And I'll have to do this with, uh, with all of them. So they're cooled off. I'm going to pour this little bit of water out. And you just pull it out. I need a strainer basket's what I need. I used to have one. I'm not sure <laughs> where it went. But anyways, this works too. You just do what you have to do. So I'm going to do each batch just like this. But I'm going to take it over there and dump it into my bigger bowl. A different bowl until I get them all blanched and ready to be canned up. So there's your greens. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Look how pretty and bright and green those are. Now I know people are thinking, uh, Canning your kale and any kind of grains is going to uh, suck out a lot of nutrients out of your stems and leaves. And it does. Some. Not all. Um, when you get to the point that you've got so much that you've got to put it up, you've got to can it. Or you can freeze it. Now, I don't have freezer space to freeze so much stuff. Plus the point of um, having your pantry prepared or let's call it pantry preparedness which means you need to fill your pantry up with as much food as possible. Sorry guys. I got y'all kind of crazy there. But uh
Putting food on the shelves is part of homesteading, is part of your pantry preparedness. Um, let's say, for instance, that we have to go off grid for any reason, for any reason that we never know about. I don't want my freezer full of so many vegetables that they're going to run. I want to get through the winter eating out of my pantry and that takes a lot of canning. Now you could freeze your greens. You can blanch them. Go through the process of uh, you know get them as dry as you can and if you've got a, a good food saver using your food saver and sucking that oxygen plum out of there and uh, sealing them and stacking your freezer they'll be good to go and you'll save a lot of nutrients that way uh, but it's just not feasible for us to have that much in the freezer plus the fact that I like long-term food storage so We've ate on this kale and the, our lettuce and our spinach and our, our, our chard and everything since last fall. So it's been good to us. So I'm wanting to get this on the shelves to be shelf stable. So now that I've got it blanched and cooled off a little bit, um, we're fixing them in the canning jars. And we'll take them out on the, the cooking porch and we're going to put them in the canner and can them for about an hour and ten minutes. Now let's get our our greens in our jars. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of canning salt in each one of my jars. I'm not sure how many jars this is going to make. I'm just kind of guessing at it. Once we get this process done I'll know for sure and then next time I don't know how much it takes. I'm going to kind of put these. Now these are hot jars. I just got them out of the, the hot water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, now that i got my salt in there, I'm going to take my greens. And I'll tell you, these are going to be so good this winter. Um, we like mixing our greens with scrambled eggs. I like putting them in soups right at the last when your soup's done just to throw in a few little bit of kale or spinach. There's just so many different things that we'll be able to use this with. Now I'm going to kind of pack it down but I'm not going to pack it down tight because we're going to have to get in there and get the air bubbles out and plus when it's pressure canning Anything that you've got in a jar, if it's in there just solid packed, it's not going to process well through the middle. So I'm going to keep packing this as much as I can without packing it tight. I think that's going to be plenty. Now since I got my salt in there, I got my greens, and I'm using the water that I blanched my greens in, and it's hot water. And we're going to leave about an inch head space, which is up to your, your first line there. So it's about that simple. Now you want to debubble it. You can see the bubbles coming up. You always, always want to make sure that you debubble very well. Go down the sides and get the bubbles out. Now you can see if it's packed too tight in the middle, you can't get that bubble out. And I might can put just a little bit more hot water. Now what you're going to do is you're going to wipe your rims. Let's see, I've got me some vinegar right here. 
and I'm just going to wipe the top and always make sure that you fill the top of your jar. Make sure there's no nicks or anything. My jars are good and clean, been sanitized. I'm going to grab my lid. Put my lid on. Put my ring on. Finger tight. Get my arm out of your way. Finger tight. Okay, I'm going to continue with the rest of these, and then we're going to put them in the canner. I wanted to come back and show y'all, after you've blanched your greens, you're going to find that they're going to kind of stick together in a wad like this. You need to kind of <laughs> unwad it and uh, loosen it up. You don't want to be packing big wads of uh, leaves down in there. So just kind of loosen it up a little bit, put them in your jar. Okay, we got them in our jars, now we're going to take them out to the back porch to the, to the canner and start canning them. Okay, we're out here on the outdoor kitchen. This is where I'm going to be canning today because it's over 80 degrees today. It is so humid here in Arkansas, and I didn't want to heat the house up, so we're out here cooking. And this is the best place to do your canning during the summertime. We just about got all of our jars put in the canner of our grains. So they're all in there. I've looked over my lid, and I do this every time before I can anything. I always make sure that my rubber's, you know, not cracked or it's in there good. Make sure everything's in place and nothing's clogged up. And then we're going to put our canner lid on. And I always have to find my um, arrow. And I've got it backwards. But anyways, we're going to put our lid on here. And then I'm going to let this come up to a pressure. Once it comes up and the steam starts coming out really good, I'll uh, time it for 10 minutes, and then we'll be back. I tell y'all, if you don't have an outdoor kitchen to do your canning and, and summertime cooking on, it's really something to think about because you don't even have to have a porch. Um, just outside somewhere, maybe in the dry as much as possible. Um, this was my old cook stove that was in the kitchen before I got my new one, and uh, I'm sweating, y'all. It's how hot it is. So I put it out here. Now, I did have a cooking area um, outside underneath the, the shed, but I love this old back porch so much that I started, decided just to make a kitchen out here. I don't have running water out here. But I do have it uh, to where I can have water out here. I just use a big old wash pan, just like they used to do. And I keep it clean as possible. Um, but it's just a really good place in the summertime to come out and bake your bread or anything that you've got to bake or anything like that if you're cooking a big Sunday dinner because that way you don't heat the house up. But this right here, doing this. You could even buy one of those big propane two or three burner um, cookers like fish cookers and you can uh, can on that too so doing it outside it's a uh, it does work people have done it forever and ever so uh, anyways we're gonna let this come up to pressure okay the steam started coming out of the spout really good so I'm gonna time it for about 10 minutes Okay, let's put our white on. It's been uh, 10 minutes. We're going to put our white on. We're going to let the, let it come up to 10 pounds of pressure. And when it gets there, we're going to hold it at 10 pounds. Um, I don't know if it's my altitude up here in the hills or what, 
but it's very hard for me to hold it 10 pounds. Sometimes it goes between 10 and uh, it'll go 11. Sometimes it'll go between 10 and 15. But either it doesn't seem to to hurt it any. But anyways, you want it to at least 10 pounds of pressure in my zone. So we're going to let it get up 10 pounds. And then after that, we're going to let it pressure for an hour and 10 minutes. For quartz, it'd be an hour and 30 minutes. And then we'll have some good greens to put on the shelf. Okay, we're going to hold it at 10 pounds of pressure for an hour and 10 minutes. Okay, our greens have pressure cooked for an hour and 10 minutes. And uh, I turn, after an hour and 10 minutes, I turn my burner off and they've been sitting here for a good an hour and uh, I'm going to get my jars out and I'm going to clean them up. I always like to uh, first take your weight off. I always like to, uh, when I take my jars out, I like to wipe them off. Even though I put vinegar in my water when I can them, I still like to wipe them off good. My greens smell kind of like sauerkraut. You know what? I forgot my jar lifter. We'll see how much uh, room I've lost. Um, you can see there's a good half an inch space there so I could have packed it but could have put a little bit more grains in it but I felt like I had it you know packed enough I'm just always afraid I'll pack it too tight but still that's a good amount and it will settle to the bottom but that's still a good amount of grains in my pint jar So I'm going to get all my jars out. And see this one, I guess I had, see it looks good. That's a good, good full jar there. So I had the right amount in it. It's trial and error. And then your other ones won't have as much. Have a little bit of spice in there but it'll still all be good but I do I like to take my jars out and I like to clean them before I put them on the shelf now they're still kind of hot y'all can hear the birds singing out here I just love canning out here and cooking out here in my outdoor kitchen because I love being outside. So when I'm out here, I don't feel like I'm stuck in the kitchen, you know. So after they cool off, I wash my jars and uh, everything with a little bit of vinegar water and then I'll put them on the shelf. I want to find the one that, yeah, this one right here. This one I packed and put the right amount in. So maybe I can get that down pat. But this is all my greens.